What's up everybody? You're watching Model Aviator. I'm Adam. This week we have a fun flight video for you featuring a brand new release from Tower Hobbies, the Seawind 1.4 meter plug and play. Now, technically, this is actually a re-release. Tower sold this plane eight or ten years ago under the Flyzone brand. It was very popular then and I think it's going to be popular now. It's got a brand new coat of paint that looks really good. From a mechanical and electronic standpoint, it is essentially the same airplane. It worked good back then, and it still does now. So the significant thing about the Sealand is it is a true amphibious airplane. So it's not like a lot of seaplanes that you see out there that have rudimentary gear that you have to take on and off to go from land to water. This actually has mechanical retracts. There is a retract servo for the mains right here that's in a watertight compartment. Same for the nose gear here. They control mechanical linkages that make the gear operate, so you can take the sea wind to a lake that has a boat ramp. You can actually drive it down the boat ramp into the water, raise your gear, operate off the water, land it. When you get close to the boat ramp, drop the gear back down in the water and taxi right up the boat ramp. And I cannot tell you how cool it is to actually be able to do that. And yes, we did do it in the fun flight footage so you will get to see that. Now the cool thing about the fun flight episodes is they're a bit more laid back but it wouldn't be model aviator if we didn't give you some details so let's get to that. So when it comes to the assembly of the Sea Wind, you have to bear in mind this is an older design it is old school so it goes together a bit different than some of the modern day bind and fly foamies that you can have together in five minutes. This one is going to take you a bit longer than that, but it's not difficult. As you can see here, there's a very small part count, and to be fair, the manual does a really good job of explaining all the steps, including the things that you may not be familiar with. However, it would help if you have a couple of foamies under your belt before you tackle the sea wind as far as assembly is concerned. Now, we're going to give you one tip that will really help you with one very tedious part of this. When you put the wings on, each wing has a push rod coming from the flaps that goes into the fuse, and those two push rods come together and go through a single quick connect on the arm of a single flap servo. That flap servo is about right here in the airplane. The hatch is magnetic and hinged, and it's got these two little support arms that lock into place to hold the hatch in place. Obviously. The seats come out so that you can get in there and get at that. But when you put your arm in here to get to the quick connect and you're sliding your wing on, invariably what's going to happen is your arm is going to hit those little supports and this thing is going to drop in your way. So the tip is there are three screws here. One screw on each of those little support arms. Just take this hatch off and get it out of your way and it will make that particular step way easier. Once you get everything sorted inside the airplane and you're done with that, put the hatch back. The Sea Wind is a plug and play, which means you can use whatever protocol you want. We fly Spectrum, so we used an AR620. It's kind of an older school receiver. It's non-stabilized for what it's worth. The airplane flies just fine without a stabilizer. Obviously, you can use a stabilized receiver, something like AS3X, if you want, and refine the airplane to whatever level you desire. Ours ended up being installed right here, and that conveniently fit underneath the rear seats. When it comes to the setup, the manual suggestion is a great place to start, and for the most part, that's where we ended up staying. We're at their CG recommendation, we're at their through recommendation for the highest rates. We just adjusted the Expo to suit our style, which you'll have to do as well. When it comes to flying the Sea Wind, we're going to give you some impressions through narration during the flying, so you'll hear those. But just a couple things, it does have a high thrust line which means that if you give this thing a big bunch of throttle and you're really slow and low, you're in danger of it throwing the nose over. So that's not a big deal. It's just a characteristic of airplanes made this way. You simply use up elevator if you're going to do that and you'll be fine. The other thing that's cool is because the slipstream is in such close proximity to the elevator and it's such a large elevator, this thing will do some pretty cool tumbles that we'll also show you in the flying. When it comes to specs and features, Heidi's going to put the specs right here so you can check those out. The airplane comes with an extra spinner 
some Tyro Hobbies decals and some white and black end number decals if you'd like to put those on the tail. You've seen the bulk of it. It is a true, useful, amphibious plug-and-play foamy, which is the nicest feature of all. It has retracts, flaps, and wingtip lights, which is really cool. But there is one other feature that we need to tell you about, and that is the price point. $279.99 is what the Flyzone Sea Wind is going to sell for, and considering what it can do, and that it's the only thing out there that can do that, that's a really smoking deal, but it gets better. Right now, Tower Hobbies, as of the date of release of this video, has a coupon code program going on right now. You can, at checkout, punch in the code SPOOKY, and you can get $30 off this purchase right now. If you decide to spend $10 and join their Super Saber Club, you can redeem that coupon. That same code will get you $55 off this airplane. So that really makes it a fantastic deal. So highly recommend that you do that. And you can do all this after you go through our link in the description. If you do that to get to this airplane, that helps support our channel when you do that. Heidi and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. We appreciate your support of our efforts. So that's it. There's nothing left to do now except shut up and get to the flying. So let's do it. We'll see you next week with something else cool with wings. Enjoy the flying. This particular afternoon, we had an opportunity to fly the sea wind. The wind was blowing pretty good at Fayette Flyers. It was constant, four to six, and gusting up to around eight or nine. That was a full throttle pass, and one of the things that I was pretty surprised by was how well this airframe handled wind, even though it wasn't stabilized. It's a pretty honest airframe, very predictable. Being a 3S plane, the Sea Wind has enough power for sport aerobatics, but it doesn't have the crazy rapid vertical that 4-cell planes this size have. Here's a hammerhead, and now it's going to get interesting. 
This is the tumbles we told you about. I'm going to do a touch and go on the grass for you. point the wind was really starting to pick up. Naturally it's time to land. The gusts between those trees get really interesting. This is the one time where I thought a you know, stabilizer or something like the S3X would probably have helped a good bit in this situation. The upside is not a very good landing. I test the gear and it handled it just fine. This is my favorite part of the sea wind. It is a true amphibian. It is so cool to be able to just drive it down the ramp, put the gear up, and take off. Oh yeah, 
you knew after logging three landings and one try, I had to do that again. Pretty sure I could do better. This is just too cool. Look underneath the wings and watch for the gear to retract. Did we get water in this thing somewhere? Bone dry. That's pretty good.